Hey, this is Ben from Ready, Set, Van. I just went over to the warehouse and grabbed one of each of the toilets that we install in our vans. I'm going to go through each one in detail with pros and cons, so hopefully you can make an informed decision about which one of these might work best for your van life goals. So it wouldn't be right to talk about bathroom solutions for van life without first talking about the pee bottle. Works great, it's incredibly cheap, works better if you're a man. A surprising number of people just rock one of these, make sure that they're near Starbucks or near a public restroom or something like that when they've got to do number two. A good combination is to take this, add in one of these fellas. So you may be looking at this and thinking, that's just a five gallon bucket with a toilet seat on top, and you'd be right. It's a five gallon bucket with the toilet seat on top. It does also have a bag liner that's designed to go in it. Inside that bag liner, it also has like a desiccant uh, kind of stuff that's down in the bottom. So basically, if you use this, it's gonna like gel and kind of solidify any liquids and anything that's in there. This makes a great emergency toilet or an occasional use toilet. And actually, if you combine that with one of these, uh, you can get a surprising amount of business done. Next up is the Thetford cassette toilet. Thetford makes a bunch of different models. There's also a bunch of other companies that make a very similar thing. Uh, this one's the Thetford 365. The cassette toilet is basically just a fancier version of a five gallon bucket. The bottom portion is the container, the storage container, so it's sort of the bucket portion. And then the uh, top portion has the bowl um, and also it has fresh water that you can use to flush the bowl and keep the bowl clean. The two parts separate. Um, there's just a little latch on the back and it comes off like this. Pee and poop is collected in here, so it's, it is a very sewagey kind of situation. It doesn't smell. In fact, all of the toilets in this video, uh, with the exception of the Lugabaloo, all of the toilets do not smell uh, when used properly. But this, you simply swing this arm out, take the cap off, and you can pour this out into just a regular toilet. Um, you can also pour it into a dump station or something like that. Some nice things about uh, the cassette toilet is number one, you have a little, a little gauge on the front here. It kind of tells you how full uh, the container is. When you use it, you pull this little, this little gate out and, uh, and it opens like a little trap door in the bottom. Um, and then when you want to clean the bowl, you, this is like a little pump thing that you do. These work great. We've installed a ton of them. I've used these a lot. Um, they're dead reliable. You know, one of the things I like is anytime I come across a product that has very simple design, a few number of parts, this thing is basically, I, I can't even imagine how one of these would break or not function properly. One of the cons, of course, to going with uh, uh, a cassette toilet type toilet uh, is the ick factor. Uh, it's pretty high. I've emptied a bunch of these um, over, the, over the years. Uh, I've gotten used to it. Um, there's, you know, tips and tricks to, uh, to make it go better. But, um, but, you know, in my opinion, it's not that bad. Uh, but for some people, uh, that would just be a non-starter. So if you're like me, by now you're probably thinking about how much you really love the toilet that you have in your home and how great it works. Uh, you just go sit on the thing, you can do unspeakable things, push a button, and never have to think about it again. The Laveo Dry Flush is probably the closest thing to that in terms of a kind of flush it and forget it kind of uh, operation. It has a bag liner system here. When you pee and you poop, it goes into the bottom of this bag. When you decide you want to flush the toilet, it wraps the bag around that and pulls more bag down so that you have a new space for more pee and more poop. You can repeat that process over and over uh, about 17 times uh, until you run out of bag. Um, when you're done uh, and there's no more bag in this uh, cassette here, this whole thing lifts out. Um, you put this all in a trash bag and you put it all in a dumpster. And then you follow that up with a brand new cassette load that in, get it set up, um, and you're ready to go again. The obvious pros to this toilet are the incredibly low ick factor, um, also the kind of flush it and forget it type of operation. Um, however, there's some significant cons to this toilet, uh, not the least of which is uh, that you're gonna be throwing out this whole apparatus uh, once every 17 flushes or so. Also, if you're on the road and you're looking for one of these because you've run out of them, I don't know of a store where you can buy these. Uh, I only know the, the website, maybe there's a couple other websites. So making sure you have an adequate supply of these 
uh, is sort of essential if you're going to be if you're going to be using one of these. Another factor is um, that unless there's something wrong with you, uh, you're going to be peeing a lot more than you're going to be pooping. And if you're using this as your primary toilet and you are peeing and you're pooping in it, you're doing all of your bathroom activities in this toilet, you're going to blast through cassettes. And that is going to make the, the long-term cost, operational cost, of one of these toilets uh, potentially very high if it's your primary toilet. It actually makes a very good uh, kind of emergency or, or uh, rarely used toilet. Maybe you have it stowed away. Um, you have a different solution for peeing. Um, and when the situation arises where you really can't find some place to poop, then you can pull this out, poop in there, hit the button, put this thing away, you can pull it out two months later, everything will be fine. So it's great for that solution, but as an everyday toilet, I would consider another option. The next three toilets we're going to talk about are all toilets that fall into a category that people often refer to as composting toilets. Without going on to a rant, I want to talk about that word composting. Um, it's, uh, it is inaccurate at best, and there's nothing about these toilets that produce a usable compost as material uh, when you take it out of the toilet. Maybe it's something that could later then be further composted, um, but the material that comes out of these toilets is human waste. It needs to be put in a trash bag and put in a trash can. These toilets do, however, share uh, a same primary innovation, which is that they uh, come up with a simple way to separate the pee and the poop from each other and store them independently. So for my purposes, I'm going to refer to them as urine separating toilets because I think that's a more accurate and ultimately truthful description of what it is they do. Next up is the sea head. The sea head is one of our most popular toilets. Uh, we install it in, I don't know, probably half of the vans that we build at this point. It happens to be installed in my personal van. We really like it for its form factor. Uh, you know, it fits really nicely under a bench seat. Um, and then we also really like it for its simple, reliable operation. So inside the lid of this toilet, uh, it has like this little cover right here that helps keep um, you know, any smells and extra odors and things like that out. Uh, this toilet should not smell uh, in normal operation, uh, but that little cover is also helpful. The front section of the uh, toilet here, uh, this is where the urine is separated from the poop. Basically any liquids that are in the forward part of the toilet are gonna go down the hole into the urine tank. Um, any solids that are in the back here are going to go down into the solids container below. And so you can see right here, uh, we've got our urine tank right here. This is about a, a gallon and a half or so. Um, you empty it by spinning this around, taking the, the top off of there, and pouring it out wherever you're going to pour it out. Uh, the solids container comes right out. One of the things you probably noticed is that we got another five gallon bucket. Um, one of the things about the sea head that I actually like is that it's almost comically simple. Um, many of the components to it are literally just like some PVC pipe and some things like that. I like that because if something did manage to break, I don't know what would break, but I sort of have the feeling like you could go to a Home Depot or something like that and you could probably fashion a replacement. It goes back together real easy. With these toilets, the way you typically use them is you'll uh, get some sort of medium like a coconut husk or something like that. You'll put that in your solids container um, and then when your poop goes on top of them, what you're going to do is you're going to take your little crank handle, and this connects down to a little paddle that's at the bottom, and you'll crank this, and basically what that's gonna do is gonna help stir the medium and your poop together and integrate the whole thing. What's gonna happen is your poop's gonna dry out um, pretty quickly. It's also gonna break up into smaller and smaller pieces, um, uh, but the main thing is it really just sort of dries out and becomes inert. So in the pros column for this toilet, I've already mentioned the form factor that I really like, um, but it also is not a ventilated toilet, uh, so there's no attachments, there's no pipes or anything coming off the back of it, uh, nor are there any electrical wires, it doesn't need a fan or anything like that. So the toilet is totally portable, it's easy to stash and stow away, you can put it on one of those door slides, it pulls out or something like that. Um, so it's very convenient. It's also incredibly convenient in the way that you change and service um, the inside. It's totally top loading. So you just pull your stuff out, works great. Pull your solids out, uh, you can clean in here, you can do whatever you need to do pretty much effortless, effortlessly, which is, which is really nice. The uh, pee container uh, also is located inside this whole box here. So if you do accidentally overfill this with urine, that extra urine is going to get contained by the box down here. So while it's going to be unpleasant, it's going to save you from a much bigger disaster. In the cons column, uh, I would say the first thing is this urine tank isn't as big as some of its competitors. Uh, it's about a gallon and a half. I think some of the other ones are about two or two and a half, something like that. So you have to change it a little bit more frequently. Also with this container, there's no, um, there's no sight glass or anything like that. It's um, you know, you have to open this up, 
and, and look at the float in there to see uh, what the, the urine level is on the tank. So, you know, just requires a little bit more checkup. The last con uh, is also a pro. It's that it's not ventilated. I actually like that it's not ventilated. It works well uh, for me for my use. I use the poop container as a very infrequent um, uh, kind of thing. It's almost like a, I use it for really emergency uses only or if it really is inconvenient if I'm in an urban situation I can't find another place to go. The uh, mixing of the poop with whatever, whatever medium you have in there um, is not as thorough with this system as compared to like the nature's head which we're going to cover in a minute. So, um, so typically if, if you have somebody who's using this toilet really as their main toilet, they're peeing and pooping full time uh, in this toilet, um, you're going to find that they're, they're going to need to empty this container probably every couple days, something like that. Next up is the Nature's Head toilet. This is one of the first urine separating toilets to really gain traction and popularity. Um, it did so especially in the tiny house movement. Um, it was installed in countless schoolies and other kinds of alternative homes. I actually installed it in the schoolie that I built back in 2016. Um, we took that schoolie to Burning Man two years in a row. We had eight people on board and I'll tell you this toilet Saw some things it probably didn't want to see, uh, but it held up great. Let me show you how it works. Inside the Nature's Head toilet, uh, you'll see that basically we have a similar design to, um, to the Sea Head, you know, where we have a front compartment where it's gathering all of the urine and guiding it down into a storage bottle. Uh, in the back, we have this little trap door that you can pop open. You can drop your load in there, close it up, you're good to go. So there are these latches here that you flip. And so if you want to get the urine bottle out, um, in order to do that, you have to lift this up a little. You gotta get it up about that far, and then you can get the bottle out. And then when you wanna take this off, um, you gotta slide this off the back here. This entire piece, which isn't light, um, comes off. And then you're left with the, the bottom, the base of the, base of the whole toilet. You know, when you're using the toilet, you're gonna be turning this. Uh, this crank handle every time, uh, every time you use it, uh, that's going to fully integrate all of the solids with uh, whatever medium you have in there to try and break it down, make it, make it inert. This is a really large compartment here, so um, like a couple using this toilet every day can usually go two or three weeks pretty comfortably uh, before they have to change this out. So, so for somebody who really does want to use this as their primary toilet, they're going to be using it all the time. Um, then it starts to make um, a lot of sense in that kind of use case. Something else to notice about this toilet is um, its size. So it's very tall, makes it hard to fit under a bench seat. Not impossible, but it's hard. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff kind of all around it. You know, you have to make sure that you have access to this, this crank handle. Uh, you need to make sure, obviously, you have access to this. Uh, and then you're, there's going to be a vent hose coming off here because this is a fully vented uh, toilet. So um, that vent hose is going to be coming off here. It's going to need a 12 volt connection to run that fan for the ventilation. The last thing I forgot to mention, when you actually do go to remove this, uh, this bottom uh, compartment to go dump it in a trash bag or something like that, you're going to have these, these thumb, nail, uh, thumb screws down here and one on this side. You're going to have to undo those and pull the whole thing out. So in the pros column for this toilet, uh, you know, it's really that it's a great full-time toilet. If you're really looking for a toilet um, to use every day, especially if you're doing number two a lot, uh, and uh, really use it as a full-time toilet, um, then this is a very good choice. It's got a large solid container. Uh, it's got a good mixing mechanism to mix those solids uh, in with whatever medium you're using. Uh, it's got a big urine tank, so you can go longer without having to change your urine tank. It's very clear on the urine tank how much urine you got in there, so that's nice. You can just see right through it. Also, it's uh, actively ventilated, so there's a computer fan in there that's blowing all the time. That's drawing the air out of here. Uh, to ensure that um, there's negative pressure and odors can't escape uh, from here into your, into your van. In the cons column, uh, you know, it mostly just has to do with how heavy and clumsy and awkward it is to deal with. So just the weight of this top unit, um, the fact that you have to bend down to do things all the time, that they're on the side, um, the fact that you have to lift this whole thing up to get this out. Um, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that, um, you know, that honestly could be better. Um, and people tend to get frustrated specifically with um, the weight. Uh, you know, if you have this installed um, like down in a, in, a, in a bench seat or something like that, and you're having to get down in there to pull it out, you know, this whole container can be quite heavy when it's full. You know, for me, the biggest con um, is that I feel like it was a really 
really like it's kind of a missed opportunity. These guys were like had such a successful product. It works really, really well. Um, it's just that uh, they kind of forgot the whole form part of their design. It was all function, but then in actual use, like there's so many things that could have been improved by this toilet, but it hasn't changed for years. Um, and so for me, it just kind of just kind of bugs me. Um, so it's it's a great toilet. It's just that I'm a bit. Uh, particular. Last up is the separate. This toilet came out uh, sometime last summer. Uh, we've installed it in a few vans. It's a very interesting toilet. There's lots of features. I've never actually used it myself, um, so I can't comment on my own personal experience with it, uh, but I am excited to try it um, sometime in the near future. So um, without further ado, uh, let's check it out. So inside the separate, we've got a similar kind of uh, arrangement as before. We've got a urine collecting area up front, and we've got what amounts to be a poop chute in the back. This has this little cover that kind of goes over it, so when you open up your lid, you're not staring right down a, a giant pile of poop. Um, so that's a sort of a nice thing. Um, when you sit down, this actually uses your body weight uh, to open up um, that flap there. So that's kind of a nice little, nice little feature. One thing you notice, they kind of try to think of a lot of things here. Um, so you open this up and it stays. So that's pretty cool. Most of the other toilets don't do that or they have to go past. So that's interesting. The urine tank is quite, quite large. Uh, it looks like maybe it's not quite as large as the nature's head. Um, it's got these nice handles and everything. It's got a nice gasket here. Uh, seems like that's, that's going to work quite well. Over here, uh, we've got the lid to the solids container. So uh, we're going to pop that up like that. And uh, under here, we have the intake uh, kind of grill or, or uh, filter, I guess, uh, for the ventilation fan. So, that ventilation fan that's built in here is going to be constantly pulling air out of the solids container. It's going to draw that through this little filter here and then out the bottom of the van. Uh, that'll pro provide also one last uh, barrier to make sure that no uh, insects or anything like that find their way in here and decide to uh, you know, make a home. Down inside here, this is really designed not to be like in a sort of composting style toilet. It's more of a sort of a trash bucket style toilet, if you will. So, so your solids are designed to fall into this, into this container and there's like a kind of a desiccant blanket, blanket that they include with this, uh, this trash bag. This trash bag is um, biodegradable, so it'll break down um, when, it, when it gets to wherever it's going. Um, but so, you know, you poop in here. Um, they say, you know, you can have, you know, a number of uses, maybe four or five days uh, of use with this before you need to change the bag out. Like I said, I've never used it myself, so I don't really know. Um, and I'm sure, you know, <laughs> your mileage may vary. So this just comes out, you take the bag, throw it in the trash, put a new one in, put this back in. Um, you know, there's not a lot of uh, maintenance. You don't need to, um, you know, make sure that you have any kind of uh, like coconut medium or something like that, that you're kind of mixing in with your poop. Um, so it's from a, from a kind of a management standpoint, it's a, it seems simpler. The feature I'm most excited about is the red light behind the separate logo here. That should come on when the P-Tank gets, gets to be about 90% full. That's an awesome feature just because sometimes you forget, you're lazy, things happen. Uh, so I'm excited about that because you really, you, it's like you can't not see it if that light is on um, and it's nice to avoid, you know, a bit of a biological disaster. Before we go inside, uh, the other thing I want to talk about is um, how it looks. So it's a really nice, modern looking toilet. And, you know, for pretty much everything we do in the vans we build, our uh, aesthetic and design kind of bar that we've set for ourselves is that it has to be as good or better than what you would put in your home. And frankly, all the other toilets aesthetically don't meet that mark. Um, this is the first toilet I've seen that actually does meet that mark. I think it's, it's beautiful. It could be, you know, if it was in a boutique hotel or, or in a home, I wouldn't think um, anything differently of it. So, so that's nice. You know, inside it's got this little flippy thing, which is kind of cool. I like that. Uh, I, I definitely like the fact that when you open this up, you're not looking at a steaming pile of crap. So that's good. You know, I like the top loading uh, design. I think that's great. It's easy to get stuff in and out of here. I feel like the, you know, maintaining this thing will be uh, a breeze, very similar to the sea head, for example. I like the trash can design. You know, we'll see. I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. But for my use case, where I think, you know, I'm using it full time for peeing and really, you know, occasionally for pooping, 
uh, I think this, this might be a, a good setup uh, so that I can still have the, the flexibility and have this, you know, really be able to use it in an emergency or occasionally, um, and then tie it up and throw it away. That seems like, um, that seems like a nice, nice compromise for me. So in the cons column, there's really only one thing uh, that I've discovered so far, uh, and that's really just uh, a design feature. It's the sheer number of parts. Uh, this thing has a lot of plastic parts. The more parts you have, the more likely something is to fail over time. I prefer, typically prefer simpler designs over more complex designs. This is a fairly complex design, at least compared to the rest of ours uh, that we've just been looking at. So I'm going to be curious to see how this lasts over time. I went to the website. They definitely do sell replacement parts for all of these parts. I don't know if that means that uh, they're just a better company and they make it easy for you to get those things, or if it means that they actually do break often. No idea. Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to give you some good information that maybe has taken you further down the road of figuring out which one of these toilets might work for you in your van life adventures. If you have used one of these toilets or you have one of these toilets, um, put a comment below and say how it's been for you. Also, if you think I got something wrong or I missed something, please put that down below as well. And if you have any questions or anything like that, put that below um, and we can keep the conversation going there. Thanks again. Peace.